every night when the sun goes down and the lights start to come on, something magical happens on Nellie Gale Road that you'd have to see to believe. Amazing in grace, how sweet the sounds they get saved to rich like me. Welcome to our home. Uh, we go by Orange County Christmas Lights or the Blount Family Christmas Show. We have about 120,000 lights that are that are outside of our home. They're all that's like 1,200 boxes of lights from Costco. That are all timed to 20 different songs. Takes about 40 hours a song in order to be able to set the lights up to them and then time them so that they'll play with the music. We broadcast the music on a transmitter like you'd have at a drive-in movie theater. That's uh, so that folks as they're driving by. They can tune to 100.1 FM and they're able to, to listen to the music that's timed right with the music. For the couple, Christmas is a great time of year and sharing it with others is the most natural thing to do. I started doing collecting Department 56 villages in 1994. I started off with a couple of pieces and then over the years it's kind of grown and over the last five years it's grown a lot. Um, three years ago we decided to start letting people into our home and we had such an amazing response from people just thanking us and being joyful about the fact that we've opened our home to them and what we had decorated and then the outdoor lighting and the music synchronized to the lights that we decided to keep doing it and our tradition has grown and I think that we provide a lot of joy to um, a lot of people and it makes us feel good about what we do and hopefully we bring joy to other people's lives at Christmas time. The Blancs begin preparing for this beginning in August and put many, many hours into making it what it is today. I started in August with putting the lights up outside. So my, my gardener, Ricardo, is a gigantic help and he actually ends up stringing a, a ton of the lights that we have out there. I set up the patterns for how they should be. Uh, we've ran 208 uh, electrical outlets and then I manually timed those outlets down to 1 20th of a second as far as what light is going to be on and what's going to be off and at what intensity that they're actually on and off for that uh, the duration of the song. So it's somewhere around a 40 hour process for a song. Some are a little less, some are, some are a lot more. The light show that we have out tonight, we have running 20 songs. And there's probably, uh, gosh, there's probably a thousand hours represented within that, within that light show, just on the timing of the music, uh, not let alone the actual you know, placement of the lights and stringing them and that sort of stuff. What began as a hobby has turned into so much more. Around this part of town, it's become a tradition. Initially, we just started with what we were doing outside. We, we weren't allowing anyone in the house. My, my wife actually prepped the house and set the villages up in preparation for a, a Christmas party. It was our first Christmas party that we'd ever thrown, and she wanted to, to look nice in here. And she'd set up maybe a one-fifth or one, maybe even a tenth of what it is that you actually see today with, within the house. And so that one day, a couple days after our Christmas party, it'd be December 13th uh, in 2009, uh, my mother-in-law and I, we were here talking, and she says, well, let's go outside and just, just watch the light show. So, oh, okay, we can do that. And so we stopped at the grocery store, we got some apple cider, uh, brewed it up, sat outside in two little chairs with our, with our cider. And I started looking around, and there were a lot of people that stopped just to watch the show with us. I said, well, maybe everybody wants some cider. And so I went back in the house, I made the couple of gallons that we bought, and I passed it out, and everybody seemed to love it. 
And so the next night, we're, her and I are back outside again, and we bought a bunch more apple cider. Yeah, and we're passing out cider to folks, and she's telling somebody about what a great job her daughter did on the inside of the house and how beautiful the inside of the home is. And next thing I look over and somebody's talking, she's telling somebody there's a family that's really excited about it. And she says, well, come on in, I'll show it to you. And I'll be darned if she doesn't walk him straight into the house and starts giving what turned out to be our very first tour of the home. And the folks after they went through the home were, were ecstatic uh, is really the only, the only word for it. They were thrilled to be able to, to see it and it added a little bit to their, to their season. And that's, that's all that we're trying to do is put a smile on people's faces and you know, spread a little bit of joy around here at Christmas time. As if all of this wasn't cool enough, he went one step further, setting up an LED sign that people can text a message to and see it flash right in front of their eyes. Uh, the lights are about, they're about a creativity, they're about uh, being able to, to take uh, lights and, and make a move and dance to the music at the appropriate times. And that is something that I had never done before, I never even contemplated doing before. Uh, it was strictly brute force and a lot of research on the internet from folks that had done it in order to figure out uh, what it is that I needed to do in order to, to get the lights to, to work. And some of the songs are better than others. There's 20 of them. There's a few of them that I'm extremely proud of, them, a few of them that I hate, and some that are, some that are in the middle. Well, my absolute favorite is, is Christmas Eve Sarajevo by trans Siberian Orchestra. Now I designed it, it's a very neat song because the song has very distinct parts to it. And so I set the lights up so that the little trees are in one part of the song and the house is in another part of the song and then the transition period is where the centerpieces in the house are. And I pictured the little trees actually invading the house. And so throughout the song, the little trees have a show of force and then the house puts up a show of force, the little trees do again and the house does again. And eventually there's a giant battle and an evasion that occurs and you'd have to watch it to see who it is that wins. But it's, uh, it's uh, my absolute favorite of the, the songs as far as the timing is concerned. Surprisingly, for the amount of lights they put up, their electric bill isn't all that bad. All the lights that we run, uh, they're 100% LED. Now, for example, we're, we're about two weeks into it. Our electrical bill on the house was $1,049 uh, that we just received uh, a few days ago. That's compared to a summer electrical bill of $1,300 to $1,400 when the air conditioning's on. So it's about a quarter of whatever we'd spend extra on the, on the actual air conditioning. So it's just not that much. And that's because they're LEDs. Now those lights are supported by 30 20 amp circuits that we've run underground to them. The reason for that is electrical interference. If all the lights are on all at once, there's only 17 amps of energy that are taken. That's comparable to a, to a high powered blow dryer. Yeah, and because the lights are timed to music, they're not all on at the same time. And so it's just not a ton of power that it takes due to them being LEDs. And though they've done this for the past three years, who knows how long they'll be able to keep this up. You know, our each year, so this is our third year, and each year in July we decide whether we're gonna, gonna do it or not. It's a, it's a big commitment. Uh, it, it completely changes that six months of our lives. Uh, there's a nightly commitment that you have within the month of December in order to be able to come out and, 
and, and had outside of the folks. Uh, if, we, if we ever move, I feel very badly for whoever it is that actually moves into the house after us because they're gonna have hundreds and hundreds of people knocking on their door. <laughs> and so uh, I, I can't tell you or answer that because it's, it's uh, as we're moved on a, on a yearly basis. And through it all, the one question they get time and time again is why they do this and the answer is simple. And our answer is always the same because it brings so much joy to everybody at Christmas. I mean, people are just, they're looking for something, you know, to make their Christmas different or special this year. And, and I think that sometimes, you know, that little, this, this one little thing that we do kind of gives somebody a little bit of faith and that there's still people out there that, you know, are willing to, you know, let you into the house. I get lots of people who are like, why are you letting all these strangers into your house? This, this cannot be safe. We have, in three years, we have not had one incident with anybody who hasn't just been extremely overwhelmingly thank you, thankful for sharing our home with them. And so, to me, it's worth, it's worth it. You know, it's been a, each year, Christmas is fantastic for some and Christmas is difficult for other folks. Uh, perhaps they've uh, lost a member of their family or uh, they have a broken relationship. Uh, perhaps it's been a difficult day at work or they don't, they don't have work. Uh, the folks, and even though we don't know them, they become part of our family and share in our family's Christmas just by showing up. It doesn't cost them a dime to, to come over except for a little bit of gas or maybe they get a ride from somebody. And they can stay as long as they want. And they can sip some cider, they can watch the light show, they can tour the house, they have people to talk to, uh, interesting things uh, to say, interesting conversations. And so it makes it fun because it's uh, other folks that, that uh, are getting some joy out of it. Uh, Christmas is not only about kids. You know, Santa Claus talks about presents and they come to children and it's for the children, but uh, the, the folks that have a difficult time with Christmas aren't the kids. Now we, we uh, work with the Firefighter Spark of Love to have a toy drive and we collect many, many hundreds, if not over a thousand toys uh, that, that go to kids that, that need the toys, which is important. Uh, but to me, the folks that have the hardest time at Christmas and the Christmas is the most difficult for is the adults. And quite frankly, as much as we love having the kids here, and they do, they really, they really enjoy it, uh, the people that puts the biggest smile on my face when they're touched by something that, that is here uh, is, is the actual adults. Uh, there was one Christmas present that I, I got that, that completely changed my life. Uh, one year when I was seven years old, my folks saved up for the year and the one Christmas present that the entire family had was a computer. It was from Radio Shack, a TRS-80 color computer. My brother and I would split time on that computer because uh, we fought all the time and argued over it. And the way I got into what it is that I actually do now with computer software was from that computer. We couldn't afford to buy programs for it. And so we would get a magazine and from the magazine you could type in programs by messing up those programs as I was typing them in. That's how I learned to be able to, to write software. And it's, it's, I've, I've been blessed, it served me extremely well. And so uh, th that was a present that was given throughout Christmas, which was, it was a very neat thing and it came from Christmas, but it's not about recreating the thing for, for other kids at all. It's, it's a, an ability to be able to touch other adults that are having a, might be having a difficult time. If you ask Andrew Blount, he will tell you that the outside is just an advertisement for what his wife does from the inside, and he's not kidding. Truth be told, the decorations Michelle has going on on the inside is grand enough to make a department store blush. I start working on my house in August, um, and the reason why I start in August is because it takes me almost two months to complete the North Pole. This is my North Pole table. Over here on the right, it's a four foot by 11 foot table. And there's probably about 100 um, Department 56 homes on it and numerous amounts of accessories. I haven't really looked up the number of them, but there are a lot. 
and it takes me a full almost two months to build the table. I hand carve all the styrofoam using hot wire foam factory tools and I do try and save as much styrofoam as I can throughout the, the years and I just keep adding to it and it, growing the village every year. So the last three years it's grown. Um, it started off as a very small village and over the last couple years it's grown to a four foot by eleven foot table. This year I added a secondary level to it and a mountain including a waterfall on it and I increased the size of my mountains by about a foot and a half so they go up the wall another foot and a half from last year and I have a train that runs around the table. I love this piece. This is new for me. Uh, in, the, in the years past my creativity has been a very, I, I say limited because I see things in a village format like streets and levels and stuff and so this year I tried to go outside of my box and try to be a little more creative and um, a young lady named Nicole Mitchell up in Palmdale actually helped me design this mountain and create the waterfall. There's two little penguins underneath the ice and so which was outside of my normal box of creativity but it was a fun and definitely challenging thing to do and so I tried to incorporate that into this upper level that I did this year. This is a completely new level along with my mountain over here and I added another little mountain going up to Santa and Mrs. Claus's house, the little spiral staircase that goes up and tried to create kind of a mountainous effect that goes back to behind where the train goes including kind of lights that look like the Aurora Borealis. Um, this is the second table that I start on once I'm finished with the North Pole, uh, which takes about two months. Um, I add this table, same format, add the levels and sculpting. Um, when I kind of filled this table up, I guess a couple of years ago, a few years back, I had started collecting the North Pole about five or six years ago, but just a few pieces. I wanted to expand that collection, so I kind of stopped collecting on the Snow Village and then moved on to some of their other departments like North Pole, Charlie Brown, and Mickey Mouse. My upside down Christmas tree is probably, aside from my Snow Villages, probably one of my most favorite things in the house. Um, I walked into Green Thumb Nursery about three years ago looking for Department 56 pieces and lo and behold I walk in and there's this amazing tree flocked upside down with all these amazing beautiful ornaments on it. I was so overwhelmed by it that I took a picture and sent it to my husband on my phone and said check out this amazing upside down tree isn't it cool. He said yes buy it and I did. I actually had to buy their floor model because they didn't even have trees in at the time. They had just finished kind of putting some of their Christmas stuff on display and they were very kind enough to me to actually take their model on the floor apart after they had just finished decorating it and they sold it to me and it came home we decorated it in time for our Christmas party which like was a three or four days later so my next collection here is Disney um, I started collecting this about three years ago department 56 started coming out with some releasing some new pieces and I had the little castle that is not part of the Disney collection, but I felt looked enough like the uh, Disney castle at, here in Disneyland that I added it to the collection. Um, it was much smaller last year and I decided that I wanted to do something unique and different to it. And I don't know if you've noticed, but it's on a piano. And so I kind of designed it to kind of work around the piano, adding the big giant Mickey ears and then the Mickey ears in the background and the different levels. Um, I love Disneyland. We, me and my family tend to visit there a lot and my daughter definitely enjoys it and it's probably one of her favorite things in the house is looking at all the Disney characters. So this next collection I call the World Fair. It actually um, started because my husband is a crazy about roller coasters. Uh, we were at a friend's house and they had a couple of different roller coasters and a few pieces and so two years ago he started looking for items online and before you know it we ended up with a couple of roller coasters, the Starship, the swing set, and a few other things in the little uh, slide. And so this year we added a couple of, of the Ferris wheels and the teacups and then my mom uh, gave me this beautiful carousel over here about two years ago. This is by far like pretty much the kids favorite that come in and visit. They all love this section. They, it gets the most oohs and ahs from all the little kids. So my next collection is a Charlie Brown. I actually started collecting it about seven years ago. 
Uh, Department 56 doesn't do a lot of Charlie Brown pieces. Most of them are just the little smaller pieces, like the psychiatric help with Lucy and Charlie Brown, or the little Snoopy dog house, just little figurine type of things. Um, this year they actually came out with the Charlie Brown house, Lucy's, Lucy and Linus's house, Peppermint Patty's pet shop, and the elementary school. Um, so it was really nice to be able to have those houses added to my collection this year. Um, I started collecting the Charlie Brown simply because my husband said that he learned how to read because someone gave him a Charlie Brown comic book when he was little. Um, and that helped him, inspired him to want to read. And so Charlie Brown's always kind of been dear to him. So I started collecting them because it was something that he was fond of. So this is my Whoville collection. It is new in this year. Department 56 just put out all the pieces this year. I was extremely excited about it because I've always kind of been a fan of the Grinch. And I actually used to put a couple of little Grinch pieces in my North Pole because I thought he was whimsical enough to kind of belong in the North Pole. And when they came out with all the new pieces this year, I just had to have it. So we built a whole Whoville around the little houses that they had, including what I considered was a little Grinch cave up here with him checking himself out in the mirror, his little sled and the dog on top of it. And you'll see that there's a little Grinch throughout, throughout the series and some Cindy Lou Who and all the different little Grinch homes. I feel like our home is something that I want everybody to enjoy. Uh, some of our biggest fans uh, the last three years as a couple named uh, Lida and Kenny Greenwich, and they are Jewish. And they have come to see our Christmas lights every single year. They come inside, they bring friends, they bring family, Christmas friends, you know, Christian friends, Jewish friends, whatever. And so this year, I wanted to bring a little bit of them into my life. And so, you know, we're, we're Christian, but I feel like my house should be open for every type of religious, you know, belief out there. And because of them, I wanted to add a little bit of them to my house. So I asked them to bring over a couple of things that was semblance, symbol, uh, symbolic to them. And so now I have little dreidel and the menorah in here. And I can't even begin to tell you how many people that, um, have come by and said thank you for that. And it's just such a little simple thing that I did because they're such wonderful friends and other people have just really appreciated the fact that I just incorporated that little bit into the rest of my home. To me, Christmas is a time for uh, what can only be described as pay it forward. A time to do something nice for somebody and then perhaps they'll do something nice for somebody else. And uh, Christmas uh, you know, re represents the, the birth of Jesus, uh, which is important to our family. Uh, but as you look around the house, this is a non-denominational house. You'll, you'll find both Christian symbols and Jewish symbols you know, all, all in the same house. Because for us, it's not about pushing any sort of religion on to, to anybody. Uh, it's about spreading some smiles, and that's the part that I enjoy about it. Is if uh, people do come here and they are touched by what it is they see or by generosity or wh whatever it is, you know, perhaps they can do something of some sort, whatever it is they like within their lives too. That'd be marvelous, make the world a better place.